Hello everyone and welcome back to the garden. Uh, things are changing here in the garden and today I wanted to quickly take you guys around and show you our gladiolas bed. Now gladiolas for whatever reason hasn't been very popular among flower farmers, at least you know the trendy cool flower farmers. I don't know, it seems like it has a lot of association with like the 80s or the 90s and I don't know, maybe funerals or something. But uh, I'm looking to change that because I actually really, really like gladiolas. In fact, they are pretty easy to grow. Uh, the corms are pretty inexpensive and they're pretty easy to grow, providing that you don't get thrips, which don't even get me started. I learned my lesson the last year uh, the hard way with thrips. I just planted the bulbs without uh, thinking much about it. I even made up a rhyme. Don't want thrips? Don't forget to dip. Or something like that. We'll go with that. We'll make... Don't want any thrips? Well, you better dips. No. Don't forget to dip if you don't want thrips. There we go. That's, that's the rhyme we want. Because... Um, I should have treated these things with a bleach solution, my bulbs last year with a bleach solution. We ended up losing all of the gladiolus bulbs. And I say losing, we didn't really lose them. Basically, when they went to flower, the thrips were so bad it prevented them from flowering. However, the corms did survive. The plants did survive. The infestation wasn't so bad that they didn't survive. And um, the cold treatment, we let. I just left them in the garden. I was so frustrated. I just left them out there in the garden. But uh, the arrival of winter marked a cold treatment and it actually got rid of those thrips for us. And here we are, the next growing season and we have beautiful, healthy gladiolus plants that we had last year that, were, that didn't even bloom. They came back. And most, um, I think most catalogs list gladiolus as hardy to USDA zone 8. I am obviously in Kentucky. I'm in more like zone 6B7 depending upon the weather. And um, gladiolus seem to reliably come back for me every single year if I leave them in the ground. And even more so if I go to the trouble to mulch them in the fall, which I didn't even do. So uh, definitely something to consider if you are growing gladiolus for the first time. But let's get on into this tour because this is not how to grow gladiolus. This is a tour about gladiolus. So the first one that I wanted to show you guys is very pretty. The hummingbirds have been loving it, and I've been loving it too. I've been picking them for cut flowers. Uh, you can pick gladiolus for cut flowers. That's another positive benefit. They have a great vase life. I don't know why more people do not love gladiolus. It's one that I ordered from Brent and Becky's this year. Uh, it's very pretty and very much on, on brand for me with my obsession with peaches and pinks and things. This one is called Vedetta. I guess that's how you say it. Of course, you'll have to forgive me if I'm mispronouncing things in this video. I, let's just face it, if if I were to ask some of you guys, some of y'all would be like, you mispronounce everything. And that's fine with me. We're all different. We're all different people and that's great. Um, this one is a beautiful, oh, beautiful peachy orange soft yellowy tone. I don't know how many other words I can find to describe this color. The outer petals are a very uh, peachy tone and there's a little bit of yellow in the center that just makes it that much more alluring. Very beautiful cut flower. Um, I only had a few of these bulbs just because they were a little bit more on the pricey side and I, I wasn't looking to make an enormous investment in my cut flower garden in terms of gladiolas this year. Even though the gladiolas will continue to come back so that's another thing to consider when making an investment with something like gladiolas. Gotta love that um, you know, they come back depending upon where you are. Even if you're outside of the hardiness zone, they can be lifted and stored over winter. So very, very good attribute to consider. The next one we have is a gladiolus called Guinea. I guess that's how you say it. And this one was also from Brent and Becky's bulbs. I've only made a handful of orders from them before in the past, but in general, I've heard that um, pretty much always good results and so far I can't complain that's for sure. What initially drew me to this gladiolus specifically was the unique coloring. Um, all the pictures that I had seen online showed a flower that was kind of like this interesting shade of brown almost and I know I'm no I knew not to expect brown per se 
um, in terms of it actually blooming in my garden because, I mean, let's face it, I mean, brown is one of those very difficult colors to kind of find in flowers. But the center of that is just so, so pretty with the kind of color variation between the kind of dark reds and kind of brownish tones, I guess. Uh, definitely not disappointed with this one. Very, very nice. Would definitely grow this one again. Uh, I think like many of my other videos, you will consistently find that I say, I will definitely grow these again because that seems to be kind of my, my thing in terms of growing flowers. The next one is uh, one we call Forte Rosa or Forte Rosa. I don't know how to say this stuff. I'm sorry. But um, as you can see by the photos, these are dreamy. I think uh, a lot of people in flower arranging would be very, very interested in this one for its dreamy peachy pink color. Um, this one might be my favorite of the season in terms of gladiolas. Uh, I should have planted more of them. I just can't get enough. Um, I found myself picking these nice and early so that I could put them in a vase and enjoy them in my house as a flower arrangement on my kitchen table. Uh, very, very lovely. In the future, I would like to explore even more of these kind of just solid pinks. Uh, of course, I love this kind of solid, light pastel peachy pink, but even exploring more so some of the darker shades I think would be really, really nice. So definitely something to consider. Uh, definitely something to consider if you're interested in peachy flowers or obsessed with them like I am in my case. The next gladiolus flower I wanted to show you is one called Amsterdam. And um, this might not be the most exciting variety for a lot of people just because it's just a beautiful, classic, pure white flower. Um, like I've said in a lot of the other videos, there is just something so lovely about a crisp, clean, white flower, something that makes it look so elegant, especially, you know, if you just put them in a vase by themselves, they can look just so classy, like, hey, this is, this is a nice event I'm at. Look at all these classy flowers. I don't know. Um, by, to, by now you guys realize I'm just rambling on about flowers. Let's just move on to the next one so I can ramble on about it too so you can see what it looks like. The next one that opened up in my garden, um, they pretty much all opened up about the same time, but the next one is one called Natan. Again, not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but it's just a very pretty kind of dark pinkish red color that I really, really enjoyed. Not much going on in terms of like patterns and veining and everything. There is a bit of white on each of the petals, uh, but a very lovely cut flower. And again, I wish I had the dahlias growing right now because I can think of at least five or six different dahlia flowers that would look so beautiful with this one. Um, I just, I have to get better at planting, I guess. Are you guys still watching this? Are you still sticking around? Um, I'm so glad and thankful that you are. I really do appreciate it. Has your opinion about gladiolas changed yet? Are you starting to like them? Um, let me know down in the comments. I want to know. Uh, we're almost finished. We have just a few more um, gladiolas that we had here in the garden. We have purple flora. This is a beautiful, beautiful, richly saturated purple gladiolus. Um, and depending upon the lighting, it can kind of be purple blue. Uh, doing my best to show you exactly what it looks like here in both sunlight and in the shade depending upon where you want to plant it, of course. This is something, this is a color that is very, very, very much out of my comfort zone in terms of cut flower, um, you know, the types of cut flowers that I grow. I usually gravitate to everything that is just light and bright and airy and, you know, uh, but these are very dark and alluring and mysterious and uh, beautiful. I can definitely imagine that a lot of these would go really, really well with the Lysianthus, with some of our darker Lysianthus. I think that would look absolutely enchanting in a cut flower arrangement. Maybe that's something we'll play with in the future. Uh, but for now, I think this one is definitely a keeper. I hope that this Gladiolus tour was helpful uh, for everyone. Um, you know, I really like to make these tour videos just because so often things look so incredibly different than, you know, what we had imagined them to look like before um, or, you know, based on pictures in a catalog. If you have any questions about any of the characteristics of these varieties or anything like that, just let me know. Um, let me know down in the comments. Ask your questions down in the comments and I will be more than happy to do my best to answer any questions that you have. Of course, no problems there. 
Uh, thank you so much for watching.